see this at the team. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Chart Talk. It is Tuesday, September 27th. Market's just closed. And I believe uh, the S&P just closed at its New lowest close, 2022, 363, 39. Ooh, so a new, a new low close. Yeah. Um, so interesting markets, you know, we're seeing things whip back and forth. So without further ado, let's get into the market outlook. Let me share my screen right here. You can see my screen, Ben? Yeah. All right. So we've got... Um, we're sitting in this bear market. It's been a real bitch this year. Uh, and it's just, it's persisting on uh, in, in good trade, bad trade. I'll talk about, you know, what I want to see out of the market for a reversal. We didn't see anything yet. Um, we'll get into that. But, you know, uh, very simply, there's a few things that matter in the market right now. Um, there's some different points in times. Some things matter more than others. Right now, the 10-year, 10-year, uh, you know, the Fed raising rates, seeing mortgage interest, mortgage rates fly. I think the national, the 30-year, Seven and a half percent today, crazy, crazy. I have a interesting take on that uh, when you're when you're done on the, the well, that we're close to a top, maybe. Well, so I'll go really quick. I was talking to a mortgage on the other day, and she was saying, "Speak up a little bit." What's that? Speak up. I can't really hear. You. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. So I was speaking with a mortgage on the other day, and she actually did your. She did you know both of us, um, and she's saying that right now to lock in a rate. Normally, like if you and I or anyone for that matter wants to buy down the rate, they want to, you know, buy the points down. You have to pay typically 1% of the loan's value. So right. if you our home, you spend five grand and you can buy the point, you know, the interest rate down. Correct. But if you don't want to buy your points down, you just, you can lock in your rate and and you're good to go. Yep. Right now, since rates are so high and, and these lending companies are aware that once this trade runs its course, just like in the beginning, just like most of 2020, most of 2021, it was a very easy refinancing market because people had higher interest rate loans. They were refining, refinancing the lower rate loans. Right now, they're making you pay to lock in your rate. So instead of paying that $5,000 for the, that one point deduction on a $500,000 loan, they're still charging you the $5,000 just to lock in the rate because they know that once interest rates do start to come back down, the first they're, thing- Everyone's going to refinance. Everyone's going to refinance, yeah. So for them to try to offset some of that risk, knowing that once that loan gets refinanced and gets paid off, that lender is not making any money off the interest anymore. They're doing this now. And she and she's been doing this for a very long time. And she's like, it's the first time in, in, in her career that you've had to basically pay to lock in your rate because these numbers have gotten so crazy right. in such a short period of time. <laughs> Let me pay extra to lock in the worst rate in the last 30 years. Yeah, it's like that couldn't be a harder sell where Jesus. You think of 2 years ago it could have been, you know, you had people lining up to refinance or get a mortgage. Now it's like now it's the hardest, not the hardest, but it's way harder. It's a much different sale. It's, you know, that Right. I mean, who knew the best trade of 2021 was going to be locking in a mortgage at 2%, 3%? I mean, I think we did, but <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I didn't think it would be this crazy. And what about people? What percentage of people do you think have an adjust, adjustable rate mortgage? That that's gonna. So I think I, I feel think, like that that's a like a, a something that hasn't tipped over yet. That's really yeah. gonna tip over. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk when we when I talk with Blake tomorrow. I'm gonna actually ask him because I feel like adjustables are kind of like that. That was like the pre financial crisis. Like that was the product. I feel like adjustables kind of like lost their momentum in this last decade. But that's I'm gonna. I'll ask I, I was reading some stories about people like just on like Reddit and things like that about pe people who. Um, you know, locked in these adjustable rate mortgages and now they can't even sell the house because it's worth 100K less than the mortgage and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so let me just look up real quick, percentage of uh, adjustable rate mortgages. In mid-2022, it was 10% of all new home, new loans. That's, oh, well, mid-2022. I want to I see what the 2021 from that shit was. All right, well, we don't know that information. Let's, yeah. let, I guess let's move on. So, um. Two charts that matter right now. We're talking about the 10 year and then the dollar. You know, the dollar's just been on this incredible tear. And, you know, shouts out to the Bitcoin enthusiasts who called, you know, the uh, the dollar's going to zero. I still talk to people who tell me the dollar's going to zero and, and Bitcoin is uh, a great hedge against inflation when it's just, you know, levered NASDAQ. Yeah, but, um, that's just but, you know, correlated. Right. But I, I feel like, you know, we don't see a bounce in the market until we see this 10 year slowdown and the, and the dollar chill out. Um, you know, it's it, it's really that simple for me. Um, uh, but you have any different take on the situation? 
No, no. I mean, I, I feel like we, I, I feel like we're almost, we've been like a broken record for the last at least month or maybe two months now. Just the ten year, just when the ten year starts to roll, that's what's at bottom in the market. Look, look at this last month. Look at the last month. Oh my god, let me share it again. It's just like, yeah, since the last month since September when it was at when we, and we thought it would slow down at the retest mm-hmm. and just rip through. Damn, three nine six. We touch four, three nine nine two. High. Damn. You know, crazy, crazy times. Uh, you you share the screen if you want. I mean, that's I mean, that was really again sector wise. Is really let me. Let me see. You know, we touched on the 10-year, we touched on the what, market. Again, energy has been a you know pretty big leader for most of this year, but now that's kind of I got I got a lot going on this chart here. But pretty much we have energy, you know, was leader for most of the year. It's now you know leaving what was kind of like a base and it's kind of starting to break down. So in my opinion, energy is probably something to start avoiding more so. Telecom again is still in this huge breakdown stage and not really relevant. For we w- we want to see energy continue to break down. Well, yeah, that's it seems like just we want to see this, this this like this gap down here. It's like you know, it's got this a huge support coming up. It's going to be very interesting. Is that a bounce? Does it go range bound between ninety and one twenty, mm-hmm. or does it kind of you know trickle down, break down to the eighty seventy range, and then you know obviously that 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 curves inflation, mm-hmm. and that just you know a lot of positive dominoes would happen if we see energy chill out. Yeah. uh we i don't i don't think little, I, kind of has like a little head and shoulders for me I, I would like that to be like i don't i don't think that's gonna be the case i think it's gonna be more range bound but you know we'll see that's just uh you know speculation to this point yeah um reads getting smoked again but, but pretty much every sector, it's just it's a very similar story most major sectors or major markets are coming into major support into 52 week lows this is the time that people make the most emotional decisions they can make this is the get me out of the market get me into all cash my 401k put the money in the mattress. This is often when you have those, you know, those panicky moves because people are not used to the market going down and especially the markets are low. So these are where, as the market's coming into major support, we should expect these bigger shakeouts and kind of really rinsing everyone out before there's any bit of a reversal. And that's going to probably coincide very closely with the tenure as it gets very parabolic. Maybe 4% is going to be a psychological number that will hold it or maybe it blows through and, you know, We'll see what happens after that, but um, I think we're kind of getting to those those max ends on both ends where the ten years getting very yeah. Strong. But we'll go go to the ten year again. No, well, we're done with the ten year. We're done. I'm done. Oh, that's what you're saying. The ten year it stops there because you're saying double top, and it was only a week ago and three three and a half percent. Now we're at four percent. Well, I mean, it's- chart talk, chart talk next week is gonna be like, nah, we're stopping at four and a half percent. Like that's <laughs> that's the top right there. <laughs> yeah. So. All right, so with that, Shake, you want to get into what some good or bad trades and topics? yeah, I just want to. I'm going to share the energy trade, energy screen up one more time. Uh, something interesting, I thought. So if we go by the 2008 playbook, and we thought this was the move early earlier in the year. Mm-hmm. So the 2008 playbook was uh, very similar to this one in that uh, equities uh, began trading lower, began the bear market, and then commodities went on that super cycle. You know, when we were like, you know. 17, 18, 19 gas prices when they went crazy. Mm-hmm. And then um, we saw the final flush. And that was when energy prices came down. They flushed with the rest of the market. And that theoretically, if I'm bringing up the spy right now, you know, theoretically, that would, you know, crush us down to this, you know, that, that would create this, you know, market push lower, which I believe could lead to a bottom. Uh, and if it leads us to this, you know, 330, 320 range, 300, who knows where that would be. But all I'm saying is the 2008 playbook included, you know, strong energy. And then finally energy uh, sold off and that created the final push down for the market, which eventually led to the bottom. So mm-hmm. um, just, so, you know, something to look out for, you know, just, just, uh, you know, more information to look out for with, with that. You want to go to good trade, bad trade? Yeah. So I, I haven't really been trading much. I'll talk. I almost entered the trade today. I'll talk about it. Um, let's go to the spy daily chart. So I was looking for. So what I wanted to see, uh, I'll go to the shakedown real quick. You know, it was, a, it was a shakedown like I've never done before, where it's like I didn't really include uh, a ton of individual equities because the, everything's just getting pushed and pulled with the market for the most part. I mean, I'll go through a, a few different. Uh, let me share my screen. 
I'll go through a few of the charts that that'll look decent, but here's what I want to see out of the market. We want to see these 2020 lose, lows from June broken to the downside to begin to look for the SPY bounce. I want to buy the SPY for this bounce, but uh, I don't want to get trapped into buying, you know, just, just buying every single dip that, you know, that could happen. Mm -hmm. So what we see today, today off the open, we want, they tried to trap us in long, you know, experience has taught us that buying the gap up was not the move. Um, go to a 15 minute chart intraday. We gapped up. We tried to push off that level up to this resistance, couldn't push through it. And that's when the selling began. Then, you know, if we look on a daily chart, we see it violated the area. I wanted to see violated this, uh, 362 17 was the, uh, violation. And then if we look intraday, I'll show it. I'll, I'll talk about what I was looking at here today. You know, here's the intraday, the 15 minute chart, and we see this 362 area. So now what I would like to see, ideally, in a perfect scenario, a gap down to 355, uh, you know, a flush down on huge volume, 352, and then that gets ripped up. That's where we want to look for the buy. Um, so I didn't get to see exactly what I wanted to see today, but we did see like a mini 15-minute, 30-minute base. I'll go to 30-minute chart here. And then we saw some volume coming into the end of the day. I started buying that volume. And what I was telling everyone, I was like, all right, so it's not the exact scenario I'm looking for, but it's a positive scenario nonetheless. We based below the area. Now, what do you want to see if this, if you're a bear in this area? You want to see more puking because we know we're at 2022 lows, more panic, you know, a lot of sell stops should be placed there, things like that. So we break out of the base. I buy some. The first thing I said was, I want to see the 363 area, 363 that we base. I want to see that uh, defended by buyers. So I buy a little bit 364. We come down to this 363 intraday about an hour before the close. And I, I buy, this is when I actually do go to full position. And, you know, what do I keep telling everyone all day in the chat? I said, I want to, I want to see the price stock price get out of here. If we don't close 367 or something like that, I'm getting out of the stock. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it's another trap. So what happens, you know, we're seeing sideways action. We're seeing sideways action. We begin to break down a little bit. I get out of a third. Then I get out and rest my position right before the close today around my price because I didn't see the, the S and P I didn't see bulls win the close. I want to see them really win the close. Mm -hmm. So I did not, you know, I, I, I started to enter today. I started to see some things I liked. They started to call it out. Uh, you look on a daily chart though, you know, if I can buy my price tomorrow, I don't want it. I don't want to hold it mm -hmm. overnight. So now I, I go in tomorrow with uh dry powder, if you will, uh, fresh gunpowder to see what's going on. I would love, uh, you know, us to, and then what we get, we got more Russia news with this Nord Stream pipeline. Uh, you know, I don't know the details enough to go and talk about that, but hopefully that gets us to gap down tomorrow to 359 or whatever it is. We get that washout, we get that reversal, and then I would look to buy that. Um, so you know that that's really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this bounce, but I'm I'm not I'm not dying for it. I'm not salivating for it. I'm not buying every gap up or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going crazy watching every tick. Uh, I have specific parameters I want to see. If I see them, I'll put on the trade. If I do not see them, I will let whatever action happens without me. And that's just fine. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then a few in individual charts that are remaining strong, we should keep an eye on. Uh, Regeneron. Regeneron chart is awesome. Um, you know, gapped up on, on some drug news. Uh, I think JP Morgan said they want to see it at 800 by the end of the year, end of first quarter next year. Definitely one, of, one we want to keep up. I think you were looking at this Vertex too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's this right. Vertex looks solid. Um, I'll let you get into this if you're looking at it. WWE. Yo, WWE. Yeah. Uh, this chart's awesome. Uh, I'm holding some in the long-term account. This is one of the, this and Kellogg cereal. It's like the two things I have in the long-term account and CCJ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this one looks awesome. Still holding the trend line. I know some guys like Kusher were buying that one today. Um, and then something we got to keep an eye on is Apple. So Apple is 7% of the S&P. Now, if you look at the S P 2022 lows, you look at the other big guys, Google, Microsoft, uh, Amazon, all these guys are hurting, trading around their lows. Apple's holding pretty strong. Mm -hmm. You know, only only 10% off highs. This is a chart we got to keep it on. If Apple pukes, the market pukes with it. Um, if Apple wants to bounce, that could be the indicator that the market is ready for a bounce. So those are the main things I'm looking at. Um, I'll stop sharing. What you looking at over there? What you thinking? All right. So again, no, no new trades since last week, but I'll go over a couple of quick ones. 
just again, it's always, I think it's always good to look back at trades that failed and see what happened. And then, you know, you don't feel as shitty when they didn't work. So you mentioned like with the spy, like if you're able to buy your price tomorrow, you, you know, it's not a good thing. Cause we're buying, you know, you're trying to buy support. You want it to be kind of ripping off support very quickly. You don't want it hanging out there. And that was like mm-hmm. for me, it's Microsoft last week when I was, you know, kind of battling with it. You know, when I saw it kind of coming in and retesting this prior to low here, this was the low, shakes out gone. And it come back in and test that low and it shook it out. And I was looking for that reversal up off of that low. You know, it had this tiny little shakeout. I'm expecting this, you know, kind of quicker break back up through support with the tyrus entry. Did not happen. So when I tried it once, I tried it twice. And like, you know, Shaky just said, when you're able to buy your price the next day, it's not what you want to see in your support. I just moved on. And, you know, as we can see, Microsoft was ready to break down lower. As it's been doing, it wasn't ready to hold the support and bounce higher. So that was you know, very similar with your lesson. Cisco was the same thing. You know, the Cisco was coming into support, had this tiny little shakeout after like a pretty big down to the day prior. And this was a very tight, you know, almost like a day trade. I was risking you know, kind of 25 cents down here. And same thing, it just wasn't ready. And it's now 10% lower. So it's like, I'm very glad I took a half a percent loss in that name versus fighting with it the whole way down. It just, I was not right there. Um, AZN, again, before the market got really smoked, this AZN looked phenomenal, you know, very nice bull flag, super tight here. And, you know, as the market gets you know, kind of beaten up, so did AZN and you know, took a, you know, a couple dollar loss, but now it's, you know, 20 plus percent lower. So now it's like, I'm glad I got stopped out and the trade failed versus having them fight and you know, fight your way out of it. So no rule of new trades for me, just kind of looking back at the old ones. Names that are setting up, again, this VRTX, Pharma name, flag in your highs, does not care about what the market's been doing. Again, talking about relative strength. I don't know if you could find much that's stronger than this name right now. Very tight range here. You know, it's kind of 290 versus 277. And then you have some you know bigger areas to kind of buy through these, these highs in time. And on the flip side, we have this Netflix that has been pretty, pretty beaten up for the better part of 2022. Definitely not a leader in the space right now. Again, they've had the first kind of quarter or two where they were losing subscribers, which is a big metric for this company. But again, they still make a ton of money and none of us really canceling our subscription anytime soon. So given the same has pulled back quite a bit off its high this year, it has formed a pretty decent base down here. And it, it has, you know, starting to get some nice higher lows and a decent little flag, even for a swing trade into this gap. Um, this is something I'm kind of keeping an eye, you know, something on the radar. So those are kind of the two names right now. It's VRTX and it's Netflix. But Netflix actually made a little bit of money on this one last week, um, but got kind of tailed out. Um, so I guess it's an okay trade. So that's really all I got. Only other news is the watches shake, which you already know this, but I know the watch doesn't know. You're viewing watch, the, your uh, screen, me. you're sharing the screen. I can't see it. Oh shit. Okay. So I had my hand up. So the watches, yeah, uh, they, they, the rest of them made, they're actually getting shipped. So they'll hopefully be here in two weeks and then we'll be, be shipping these guys out with the watch case. And, uh, that's just some fun little exciting news on our end after the six months of us going nuts designing this thing. So that's all I got, Jake. Any, any last, any last words? Uh, yes. Uh, I have a question for you, Bennett. Very important. There's a hot, hot new investment out there. I want to know if you're a buyer or if you're a seller. All right. Sharing my screen. Can you see it? Oh, God. Happy Wood. She's got a new fund and anyone can get involved. Anyone can buy it. 500 bucks, all you need. It's 70% private markets, 30% public companies. There's only the expense ratio to own this. It's only, you know, almost four and a half percent of your money. Okay. Oh, so you got 100K, just hand 4,200 over. Over to Kathy Wood. And the best part, the best part, you can only uh uh quarterly redemptions. You can't just pull your money out. It's you know, she was sick of losing all that money. So uh she had a great she said we're doubling down on innova- innovation, she said, as her fund is down 90% from highs. So are you a buyer to the uh the Kathy Wood new innovation private market fund? If it was that or an NFT, I would do it. If it's just that or anything else, no, you couldn't pay me. But so on the VC, on the VC topic. Um, they did uh, when you check most VCs it's like the, the, it's not like a bell curve of returns where like if no you, there's there's one that work and 15 that don't yeah or it's, it's more like one works per 100 it's like a, and the one and the one is you know 1000x and you know that's how you get paid yeah 
but they so but when you when you take all the VCs in general, which is a very small market to begin with, uh, the average rate of return that these VCs will get broadly, like if you had a S and P index of the VC market, they actually have underperformed the S and P by two hundred basis points by, by two percent a year. But then there's the outliers, the ones that we hear of, the guys who bought into Uber or Facebook early and turned you know fifty grand into five hundred million or whatever those you know thousand x returns are or ten thousand x returns. So as much as you know, this is exciting for most people or maybe new like newer investors. Like, oh, we can get in you know kind of pre IPO, but you're like she's going to get good deals for like her cut like for her firm but like the people that are buying this vc fund like the, you and i we're getting in the pre-ipo price before the ipos we're not getting that seed round when it's you know a penny a share Jeez, this is crazy to me one of my really really smart friends who's in the venture capital world told me hit me with this and he's like i actually kind of want to be a buyer of this i'm like pulling my hair out it's like what, what a, it's like just fucking leverage all it is is leverage all she yeah. does is leverage she's leverage nasdaq leverage bitcoin that's all she is no it's God, I'm gonna go even, even with like again I, I was easy. i was never the big uh nothing against her but i was it's just anytime there's like the most popular fund manager of the, the time you think in 08 was with john paulson he had like that crazy like yeah you know, there's like every you know couple of years is like the, the new best person you know when it comes to right the next warren like, warren buffett but it's like when you become that, like when Kathy Woods becomes Kathy Woods, and everyone knows her as household name. She's had the five or ten years of success, and it's hard to replicate that. And you're, and when it becomes this obvious, that manager as a trade is like it's she's on right. Everyone loved her going to twenty twenty two. Now Ark is getting smoked, and now she's like the biggest villain in the world. And I'm reading this book. It's, it's funny you said that the chapter geopolitical alpha. It's an awesome book. It's about um uh, looking at um kind of. I don't know, the political environment and, and, you know, kind of guesstimating the future based on countries' constraints and what they have to do. But mm -hmm. it talks about how uh, there's an opposite correlation to political analysts where the, the bigger they get and the more they get on TV, the less you can trust because the more they have to talk their book and worry about their... They got to move. Know, and it's scared. literally just exactly that. It's like the bigger they get, the less effective their word is. And, yeah. And so, I mean, I'm sure that could be taken into the financial space, space as well. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So, um, again, I could, if I could short that fund, I would. Even though I hate short it, but couldn't couldn't get me to put a penny into that. Yeah. No. That's just and that management fee is insane. That's like I don't even. That's, know what, that's what I'm saying. It's like that's like she just they're, now that with a five hundred dollar minimum investment, it's just like the smallest investor. Like how how much how much can I suck out of every single person in America or the world? I don't know. I'm sorry. Right, well, it's sort of fun, uh, guys. It's me just yoloing fucking call options. <laughs> All right, I'm going crazy. We should wrap this up. All right, without further ado, um, catch you guys next week. <laughs>